So with the price of meat skyrocketing right now, I thought now is a great time to show y'all how to make some really cheap protein. This is sort of an overview um, of some ideas of dishes that you can make that are going to be extremely cheap and also really good for you. And the secret is grains and legumes. So this is by no means a complete like all of the grains, all of the legumes uh, video. I'm just giving you an overview of some of the grains and legumes that I happen to have. Yeah, this isn't even all the grains and legumes that I have, but I did uh, restock uh, a lot of my legumes recently. I, I have mentioned this in other videos before. I'm not a fan of beans. I just don't like the texture. I don't like the flavor. They taste kind of like dirt. It's like, I'll eat them if they're in things, but I'm just not really a fan. However, um, with meat prices as expensive as they are and with food shortages perhaps in our future, I thought it would be wise to stock up on some um, dried legumes because they keep super well, they're super cheap, and you know they're basically a very cheap source of protein that you can keep in your pantry for years years and years and years and years. Uh, notice first that all of my legumes, I have some split peas, I have some small red beans, lentils. I'm not going to pick this bag up because it has a leak, but this is pinto beans. <laughs> the poor bulk section at Winco was like, there was nothing there anymore. <laughs> um, that was all I could get. I've got black beans. This is actually like one of my least unfavorite beans. It's like, I wouldn't call this my favorite because I don't really like beans, but like of all of the beans, this one is like, okay. Uh, kidney beans and then chickpea. This is actually my favorite <laughs> bean. Favorite, again, in air quotes. I really like hummus and I really love falafel uh, and they're okay in things. So like, this is like my most tolerable legume. <laughs> but here's a legume a lot of people forget about and that's peanut butter. Peanuts are not nuts, they are legumes. And peanut butter is amazing for so, so many reasons. One, it's very cheap. Two, very readily available. Three, it lasts it forever <laughs> in your pantry. Four, there's a lot of really good fat in this as well. And this is something a lot of people overlook, but you need fat in your diet. Like I know a lot of people who lived through the 90s, um, through all that propaganda of, oh, you need to eat low fat stuff if you want to lose fat and be healthy. It's like, no, you need fat. And um, peanut butter has some pretty good fat in it as well. So it's packed with um, nutrients and fat and protein. There's even some fiber. Uh, commercial peanut butter has salt and sugar as well, but those things are tasty uh, and it's ready to eat. That's another great thing about peanut butter. Like you don't have to soak it and cook it. You can just eat it like literally out of the jar with a spoon. And um, if you're an American, you probably like peanut butter. Can't say that for um, some other people in the world. And before I have European trolls in the comments being like, I take offense. I love peanut butter. Yes, I know people that are not American do like peanut butter. However, in general, I have seen that if there are people who don't like peanut butter, they tend to not be from the United States. And there are, yes, there are people in the U.S. who also don't like peanut butter. Anyway, I digress. Peanut butter is amazing. Uh, and also often overlooked in the legume and grain paradigm is seeds. And this is a giant bag of sesame seeds. I've already used some of them. Um, but these are great to throw into anything really like um but i throw them anytime i do any kind of chinese stir fry it's great to just throw in some of these at the end they're really good for you they help complete proteins we're going to talk about completing proteins in a bit um and if you get them at your local asian market find your local asian market wherever it is if you're lucky enough to have one go there and you can probably get a big bag of these for pretty cheap there's also um i don't have them uh, in the room with me right now because I didn't want them to melt, but I have frozen peas and that is a huge, huge staple legume for me. It's a legume I actually really, really like. I love peas fresh, but they're only fresh like one or two months out of the year and you have to go to a farmer's market to get them. Uh, but frozen peas are readily available all year round and they're usually rather cheap as well and so versatile, so good. And I do believe they have all of the amino acids in them as well. More on amino acids later. All right, and then uh, a lot of people when they think, oh yeah, plant-based protein, they think legumes, maybe some seeds, maybe nuts, but they don't think of grains. And actually protein is in almost everything, like even vegetables, even a lot of vegetables have some protein in them. Uh, but grains have a lot of protein. Grains such as this nice giant cheap bag of white rice, this bag of whole wheat flour, uh, this giant bag 
of noodles that I got at Winco. This has protein. I'm, I do believe there are eggs in these noodles as well, but like even if they were eggless noodles, like the flour has protein. So any pasta has a lot of protein in it. And oats, another grain. Any grain tends to have protein. So I mentioned a couple things, uh, amino acids and completing proteins. The thing about plant-based protein as opposed to uh, animal-based protein is uh, with plant-based protein, um, a lot of these items that I have on the bed with me um, do not have what is called a complete protein. There are several amino acids which make up a complete protein. And if you're eating eggs or dairy or meat, uh, those are already complete proteins. And certain grains and legumes are also complete proteins. I believe peas, um, like I said, I think they are complete, but they're like miss, they're like low on one or two of the amino acids, but they are complete. Soybeans, I believe, are complete. Quinoa is complete. Uh, there are a few other grains and legumes that are complete proteins, but for the most part, in order to make a complete protein with plants, uh, you need to balance out a grain with a legume. And in some ways you need look no further than um, the peasant cuisines of various cultures for inspiration on the kinds of foods that you can make to make a plant-based complete protein. So there's many reasons that plant-based proteins are actually like a really good idea if you wanna save money on food. And one of them is um, if you have beans and rice, for example, um, not only do they make a complete protein, but you have all of these nutrients from the rice and you have all these nutrients from the beans. And the beans also in a way are a vegetable, they've got fiber. Um, so you've also got the fiber and some beans, depending on what kind of bean you're using, especially if you use something like peanut butter, it also has a lot of fat. So it's, if, if I had, like, I wouldn't cook anything with this probably, but if I had like these beans, these rice and some peanut butter, that's a pretty complete meal right there. Like that, that will give me almost everything I need. Now I wouldn't want to eat absolutely nothing but this for every single meal every single day, but I've got my fat, I've got my protein, I've got my carbs, I have my fiber, I have all these vitamins and minerals just from these ingredients. Whereas if I ate like some chicken thighs instead, yeah, I'd get a lot of protein and I get some fat, but I wouldn't really get carbohydrates, I wouldn't get fiber, I wouldn't get like a lot of the other nutrients. And it's more expensive, which is really the primary focus of this video is cheap protein. So as I said, this is more like an overview video of to give you some ideas of uh, dishes that you can make. But in the coming weeks, I will be actually making dishes that are not necessarily 100% uh, vegan, but a lot, a lot of them will be vegan. Um, and they will be basically legume and grain based dishes. But right now I just wanted to give you a basic overview and talk about some things that you could do with these. So as I mentioned earlier, you need look no further than the peasant cuisines of various cultures to get inspiration. So here's a dish that I love making all the time, pita and hummus. Uh, yeah, you can buy pita or pita chips or crackers at the store. Um, or you can make your own. <laughs> I do have a video of me making hummus. Uh, I'll put it next to my face and you can check that out. I do not have a video of me making pita bread, I don't think, but I do have a video of me making flour tortillas. It's kind of, you know, you can get away with making just flour tortillas and having that with the hummus because it is tahini, which is a seed paste sesame seed paste to be exact, mixed with garbanzo beans. So that's legumes. And then um, any bready thing like literal bread uh, or pita or tortillas, that's gonna be grain-based. So that will be your complete meal. And the sesame seeds also have a lot of fat in them. So pita and hummus or pita chips and hummus is actually like a really extremely healthy, uh, good meal to eat because it's very complete. And if you make the pita yourself, it's pretty cheap. Uh, another idea is just your classic beans and rice. And again, there's every culture has some version of beans and rice that you can draw upon, uh, but it can be as simple as just cooking up a pot of rice, cooking up a pot of beans and just eating them at the same time. If you actually like beans, unlike me, uh, that is fine. Uh, another thing you can do, I did a video on this a while ago for spicy rice. Uh, you know, you cook rice with some spices and some oil in there because like I said, fat's important. And then you could cook beans and just mix it in there and that would automatically make it taste a little better if you're a person like me who doesn't like beans. Another idea, I do have a video on this, is refried beans with rice. That is one way that I, a bean hater, <laughs> actually likes beans okay. If you refry them in some spices and a lot of fat, they taste all right. And that sort of thing is good with black beans, although it looks kind of gross. 
and these pinto beans. Uh, kidney beans, they're pretty good. You can just put them cooked into salads. Uh, you can just throw them into various things. Uh, they're also really good in chili. And you can make your chili with meat and beans, or you can make it with just beans. Like I've done that before. And again, it's not my favorite because beans aren't really my thing, but um, yeah, a chili with all beans. Uh, all the spices and the tomato and the chilies and stuff in there. Uh, even if you don't like beans very much, it's going to mask a lot of the stuff that you don't like about beans. And if you have rice on the side with your beans, or you can have cornbread on the side with your beans, corn is another grain. I know a lot of people think of it as a vegetable, but it's actually a grain. It has protein. It combines with beans to make a complete protein. Uh, that's another classic idea. Uh, baked beans and cornbread, or baked beans and bread another idea. Uh, split peas, they tend to be one of the cheaper legumes that you can buy at the store, and split pea soup is extremely classic, and it's pretty good. Like, I actually don't mind split pea soup, and you can make a vegetarian version of it, or you can make a version that has just a little tiny bit of meat to flavor it, uh, and then if you just have bread on the side with that, boom, complete protein. Lentils, I ate a lot of these when I was really, really poor and living with my brother, and his wife, they had um, some young kids, so they were on WIC, which meant they got a lot of extra legumes. Uh, incidentally, if you are on WIC, like all of these little bags of legumes I'm holding up, you get through WIC. Um, th these are always on WIC programs, so you can get these, and um, that's a great way to save money. What my brother and his wife used to do with a lot of their surplus lentils is they would sprout them. And this is a trick you can, you can even buy dried mung beans, you know, the bean sprouts that are in um, Chinese stir fries and the like. Uh, that's actually a legume. It's a bean that has been sprouted. And you can do the same with lentils. So um, if you're like me and you don't particularly like the texture or taste of um, lentils so much, you can sprout them. And it's basically like sprouts. You can put them in sandwiches or in salads. And it's more like a vegetable at that point than like a legume. I mean, this is a vegetable. It just depends on how you think about it. Uh, but lentils, also lentil soup is quite classic, just like split pea soup. Uh, make some lentil soup and have bread on the side. Boom, complete protein. Or you could put pasta in your lentil soup. Boom, complete protein. Or I made this on my $40 month uh, grocery video series, uh, curried lentils uh, with uh, roti, which are Tortillas made with whole wheat flour. Boom, complete protein. Our friend peanut butter. Uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I mean, they're really basic, but they're actually kind of good for you. The bread and the peanut butter come together to form a complete protein. This has some good fat in it. Yeah, it's also got a little salt and sugar in it, and the jam has a lot of sugar in it. But, you know, it tastes good, <laughs> and it's really easy to make, and it's cheap, and kids like it too. And it's actually kind of healthy because it makes a complete protein. But there's a lot of other things that you can do with peanut butter. Um, if you think Asian, um, like peanut sauce with noodles is like, I've been craving that a lot recently, so I'm probably going to make that pretty soon and uh, do a video on that. But yeah, the noodles, flour combines with the peanuts, makes complete protein. Um, another snack that I really love making, and I do have a video about this, uh, a couple ones, I think. Um, they're these peanut butter balls. I use raw oatmeal and um, peanut butter combined together, it makes complete protein, and I add a little honey to sweeten it, and I roll it into balls, and they make a really nice snack. And I've even known some people to put peanut butter in sushi, and like the peanuts combine with the rice in the sushi to make a complete protein. Some people put peanut butter on flour tortillas. You can do a lot with peanut butter, and you can just eat it uh, out of the jar as well. Oh, and incidentally, you don't even have to make like all of your meals have the grains and legumes together at the same time. You could have like just rice for breakfast and then you could have like just peanut butter for lunch a few hours later and it would still combine to make the complete protein. So yeah, like if you like just, just rice with spices in it, you know, you just want to have that. You don't want to ruin it by putting beans in it. You could have that for one meal. And then if maybe at noon you wanted to have a smoothie with some like um, soy milk or something, you know, that could combine to make a complete protein. Rice ideas, you can make fried rice. I like to put frozen peas in it and sesame seeds. So that complete protein. Another thing I really like doing, and I did this a lot when I was poor and when I was a kid, and also, I still do it because it just tastes so good. One of my favorite things to eat, it's really cheap, delicious, pretty healthy, and very, very easy to make. I just make a pot of regular white rice, and I serve it with some steamed frozen peas and a little butter. 
and it's like one of the most delicious things ever. And it's a complete protein and it's actually pretty good for you, depending on how you feel about butter. Even something like noodles, which, you know, I guess most people probably don't see noodles as being healthy necessarily. You can combine this also with legumes. As I said, you could do a peanut sauce, but you could also even sneak, like I think chickpea is one of the more forgiving ones or white beans as well. You could kind of grind it up into a paste and kind of sneak it into some buttered noodles. And you know, maybe people eating it wouldn't notice. Also, you can make crispy chickpeas by, um, you cook them first by boiling them and then you roast them with some oil and some salt, maybe some other spices. And you can throw those into like a lot of different dishes, including like if you just wanted some butter noodles, you could probably throw some crispy chickpeas in there. It would add some texture, it would add a little flavor and it would complete the protein. So I hope that gave you all some, just some ideas to start thinking about meals that you could make that are based off of grains and legumes to save some money in these times. And as I said earlier, in the coming weeks, I will be um, making some recipes with these very <laughs> legumes and grains and showing you them in action. Uh, thank you to my newest patron on this channel, Mary. I feel kind of strange having a Patreon on a channel that teaches people how to save money on food, because uh, if you want to save money, don't donate to people on Patreon. But if you really are in a secure place and you feel like supporting the channel, go ahead and thank you again, Mary. See you next week.